This is uh, Carl in ROV Nav. Go ahead. Yeah, we're ready to do a photogrammetry pass. Um, More than two centuries old, 64 feet long, and resting on the sea floor. It was the industry. It was the only whaling ship that was lost in the Gulf. Jeremy Wyrick and his team at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration put new telepresence equipment to use for the discovery. A photographic robot live streaming what it sees. It's a new way of doing ocean research and certainly a new way of doing ocean exploration. First, they needed a location to test it out. I got a call from my colleagues at NOAA who said, we're about to test systems. We're about ready to pull out of Pascagoula. Uh, do you have any targets we should drop on and take a look at? And I said, well, yes, there's a good one. Dr. James Delgado is the Senior Vice President of Search Incorporated. He's worked on several shipwrecks from Pearl Harbor to the Titanic, and now the industry. I've been able to walk through these dark, deep bottom of the sea halls, uh, a vast museum that as you find and as you work, the light comes on and there you are being exposed to a story that perhaps didn't even know had been written. The video revealing what's left below from the industry. The brig from New England was built in 1815 and used to hunt whales across the seas for two decades, but lost in 1836. Dismasted by a storm and sinking, industry was abandoned by its crew and within a few days was boarded by another vessel which took off as much as they could leaving it to sink off the coast of Mississippi. Research shows it was manned by an African and Native American crew just years leading up to the Civil War. For a black American to get to land up on shore, they could be in a very tough jurisdiction and find themselves in jail. And if they couldn't pay for their time in jail or get out, they could be enslaved. The wrecks that have power or meaning to me are those that speak to aspects of history that we need to learn more about. So a wreck like industry speaks to working people. All of the wood is, is deteriorated away, but this was, this is the wreck. It's located about 100 miles from the coast here in Pascagoula and 6,000 feet below sea level. Now, not many entities in the world can access this location, so researchers are not looking to bring anything up from this site, but they are working to have it listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Whether they represent history that we're proud of or that we're not proud of, if it's significant, it should be in the National Register. I can't think of a better way for all these stories to come together than in the history of the industry. Philip Hoffman is a research and development coordinator for NOAA in Gulfport. Our crew and our scientists were able to take the ship out, put our remotely operated vehicle over the side, survey this wreck with 21st century technology, which we're growing in spades here in Mississippi, and add the story of the industry back to the story of the Gulf Coast. I can't think of anything that is more exciting than those two things put together. But researchers say so much remains to be found in our own backyard. You don't have to go far to be an explorer yourself.